I'm Ross Hoddinot, I'm a professional photographer specialising in macro photography and in this video I'm going to tell you why I use macro lenses to take photographs like this. A true macro lens is one which is optimised for close focus, um, so every macro lens, um, to, regardless of its focal length, will offer one-to-one -one life size magnification. Um, other lenses may say macro on them, but this is just indicates that they focus close. So this is a, an 18 to 70 millimeter kit lens um, and just to illustrate the kind of limitations of using a kit lens I'm going to try and, and frame this flower. I'm going to fill the frame with a flower but, but the lens just won't focus that close um, and, and even if it did I'm so close to the subject that I'm going to limit the amount of light and if I was photographing a flighty subject like a butterfly or a dragonfly it's just going to fly away. The advantage of buying a dedicated macro lens is that you can shoot from further away, um, which is going to reduce the risk of, of your subject being scared, but also allows you to, to kind of light your subject properly. So macro lenses are available in a variety of focal lengths, ranging from 15mm up to 200mm. Um, all macro lenses have the same magnifying um, capabilities. They'll all offer one-to-one -one life size reproduction. Um, the, the key difference with focal length is how close you have to get to your subject to get a frame filling result. So with shorter focal lengths, like 40, 60 millimetres, you just have to get closer to your subject. Now that isn't an issue if you're photographing flowers, static subjects, you're working indoors, still lifes. If you're photographing wildlife, it's a key issue because you, you want to get further away from the subject to reduce the chances of it if you frightening it away. This is my favourite macro lens, it's a 200mm tele macro. Um, it allows me to work uh, quite a long distance away from my subjects, which for wildlife is great because I'm, I'm less likely to scare my subjects away. So it's great for insects, dragonflies, reptiles. Um, I also like the fact that this one has a tripod collar, which means I can quickly switch uh, format, which is, is ideal. Um, and it gives me extra stability and balance. So with the tele macros, you often find they do come with a tripod collar. Manual focus is lovely with a macro lens. Unlike kit lenses, um, they have a really nice kind of large uh, focusing grip, which means that you've, you've got a really good precision over how you focus. Um, and, and, you know, for, for this lens especially, manually focusing is, is a very, very easy and precise thing to do. So I tend to, to rely very heavily on, on uh, live view focusing um, when I take my close-up shots. And, and, and one of the reasons for that is I can zoom into a very small part of the image uh, or the subject and, and focus it with great precision. And I would normally focus manually in order to do that before taking the photograph. Most macro lenses have a focus limiter switch um, and basically you won't find this in every lens, um, you find them on most macro lenses and it just allows you to limit the range of the focus. Um, so to give you an example, I mean macro lenses focus through a very very broad range and this one goes from 40 centimetres right through to infinity. Macro lenses are really good for all kinds of subjects, not just for, for, for kind of close focusing. Um, so they're very good for portraits, they're good for landscapes, and you can limit the range for different subjects. I think image stabilising is really important if you're shooting handheld because you can take photographs at slower shutter speeds, which is, is great if you're shooting in low light, or if you're shooting in woodland, for instance. Um, personally, I often shoot using a tripod, so in those situations, I don't need it. But it is a feature I look for in, in a shorter uh, macro lens. The key thing when you're selecting a macro lens is, is kind of thinking what kind of subjects are you going to be shooting. If you're going to be shooting static objects, then go for a short focal length. That'd be absolutely fine and you're going to save a few quid as well. I think if you're going to do a lot of wildlife and you need a, a larger working distance um, and you're going to be working with natural light a lot, going for a longer focal length of 100mm or longer is a really good investment. 